In this section on cut number three, Robos gives a rather detailed description on how to move the arm and the sword, but no further information. So let's start with having a look at the explicit information we have. Motion 1. By turning the upper part of the wrist and back of the hand downwards from the inside guard, drop the point outwards to the right till the edge of the blade is opposite the diagonal line from 3 to 2. At the same instant, raising the wrist with the straight arm as high as the shoulder. Motion 2. By the contraction of the fingers and the motion of the wrist, conduct the point up the line from 3 to 2. Motion 3. When arrived at figure 2, turn the back of the hand up and drop the hand so as to bring the blade into the position of the outside guard. So this is what cut number 3 looks like according to Rover's definition. Obviously, there are a lot of things which are not addressed in this definition, which would be relevant for cut number 3 to be a real fighting technique. Rovers does not tell us a. what cut number 3 is aimed at, b. what footwork to use along with cut number 3, c. which other motions go along with cut number 3, d. in which situation cut number 3 is used, and last but not least e. Why is it important to move the arm and sword in the way it is described and not in any other way? And also another question arises. Why does Rovers leave out all the things which he does not address? 